who's the worst main character we're supposed to sympathize with? Hannah Baker from 13 Reasons Why. Hashtag X200B, commits suicide and becomes romanticized by the school and everyone around her, gets a cute boy to become obsessed with her and view her as the one who got away, and gets revenge on all her bullies. It's everything you don't want to tell or show a person struggling with suicidal thoughts. They also specifically asked suicide awareness and prevention organizations what to do and not do when depicting suicide and promptly ignored every single thing they were told. This show is disgusting and pathetic and the creator should be ashamed. The sad reality is, the truth of how to handle people with suicidal ideations isn't romantic, sexy, funny, or entertaining. It's simply not a good subject for a show trying to cast a wide net and garner a large audience so they just made something that lots of people would watch without concern for the consequences. This is the thread where I learn how out of touch with popular culture I am. I only recognize Tom Jerry. That dude from The Notebook if you don't go on a date with me, I'll kill myself. Aw, so romantic. Lady, Hess actually insane. Emily from Emily in Paris. Jax Teller from Sons of Anarchy. Dude's son straight up got kidnapped and his wife got injured to the point she couldn't perform surgeries because his stepdad put a hit out on her and it still wasn't enough for him to leave his dumb motorcycle club. His wife begged him to leave for their safety and he wouldn't. She tried to leave on her own with her children and he stopped her. Then she ends up getting murdered by his psycho mom. Dude was a straight up pos. Jax got terrible towards the end but they also destroyed other characters too. The worst for me was Juice's whole secret blackmail storyline. I genuinely thought Sutter must have an issue with Juice's actor, the way his storyline went. I agree. It felt like he bombing that character harder and harder in increasingly desperate attempts to get Theo Rossi to quit. But then again, they really just ducked up pretty much every single character's development for the last couple of seasons. Unfortunate. Justice for Opie. Her Grandpa Giat. Piper from Orange is the New Black. This is my first instinct as well, but I don't know that we're supposed to sympathize with her. It's the sort of show that makes me think it's intentional. Mainly because we can with so many of the other characters. Yeah, I always felt that she was the protagonist, but not the good guy and that's intentional. The story is told largely from her point of view so we understand why she's doing things, but we're not meant to agree with everything she does. If not, Boy they really wrote a terrible character. The same creator also did Weeds. Which was another highly unlikable main character. That bald-headed little bastard from a kid's show who acts like a spoiled shit. Kalu did not want to go to the park today. Like all days Kalu was being passive-aggressive. I always told my kids that Caillou had cancer which is why he was bald and why his parents literally let him get away with anything and everything. They are fine preteens now lol. Wait holy shit. For years I thought he did have cancer. Never seen the show but heard he was a little shit and thought it was because he was trying to cope. You're telling me he's just a bald little shit for no reason? Carrie Bradshaw In the reboot, Miranda steals the obnoxious crown right off her head though. Worst character development of all time. Her and Steve, both. They didn't even give Steve a scene where he was upset or fought for his marriage, etc. And don't tell me Steve who was a bartender and banged hundreds of women forgot how to finger his own wife. Not buying it. Right, and how in his 50s he is like ADS dementia level senile. It was weird. Like, here are the four main women all glamorous in their middle years, and Steve is just like Miranda? Oh yes, I remember her. I really feel like they just wanted Miranda to have her unorthodox reinvention journey and not have to be worried about the realistic consequences of someone else's feelings getting in the way, so make him a doormat. I really feel like they just wanted Miranda to have her unorthodox reinvention journey and not have to be worried about the realistic consequences of someone else's feelings getting in the way that's pretty much a central theme for all of the characters, including during the original show. I think original Steve stood up to Miranda a lot. Miranda was the most stubborn of the four, and that often kept her from connecting to her current guy. One example was when she viewed Steve as just the bartender, and he left, forcing her to reevaluate how she was treating their relationship. I also think Samantha was a really cool balance of putting herself first, and accepting the fallout from other people's feelings. In the first movie, she realizes she wants to be single and breaks it off with her guy, knowing that he's a good dude and is hurt. 
Emily from Emily in Paris she ducks up and barely suffers the consequences. Sleeping with a friend's partners and still remains friends with both of them openly. Screws up business opportunities, nothing besides a slap on the wrists, and somehow, it's magically resolved. And her whole I am a dumb American, Bon Apple T exclamation mark and she dresses like if Harry Styles was color blind. Her banging the teen was when I noped out of there. I apologize, what? He was 17 I think? They family said he went to a college which in France is middle school. I don't remember why he was 17 and in middle school but she heard college and thought university, like the US college. I think what happened was the girl said she wanted to introduce Emily to her brother who was single. Emily met her youngest brother on a tour and thought that was who her friend wanted to set her up with. After she sleeps with the younger brother she gets introduced to the older brother. Yeah and they said the younger one recently finished college or something like that and she was like oh sweet. Evan Hansen, he's a legit monster. At least in the musical, he gets called out out for his actions by his friends and loses everything. The movie cut all that because God ducking forbid we hold him accountable for being a massive creep. I'm so mad they cut good for you from the movie. I would have said Nate from Ted Lasso but the show caught my vibe and turned him into the antagonist I hope he doesn't get a redemption arc. I suspect he may. The star got one, the owner got one, the lackey got one, the three hooligans at the pub kind of got one. I'm bad with names. The three hooligans are my personal favorite characters of the series. The scene of them watching British Bake Off and their night out with Beard are two of the most laugh out loud moments of the show. Tori Vega from Victorious. She kissed Beck in front of everyone just to get back at Jade, and she kissed Kat's boyfriend because she was jealous. And she didn't seem to care that her prom prevented Jade from doing her performance. Agreed. Also, I thought Kat and Jade were more impressive vocalists. It drove me crazy that Torai was the main character despite most of the people around her being more talented and enjoyable to watch. I've only seen the first couple episodes and then an episode here and there if I found it on TV but wasn't the point of the show that she's the new kid trying to fit in in the school of talented kids where everyone is crazy talented? Seems appropriate in that case, she would be the MC. Side note, as a kid I could never watch it because I couldn't stand Kat's voice. I find it more tolerable now but it's still annoying, I'd quite Ariana use that voice for her, unless that's actually how she sounded back then. About your side note, if you watch the very first episodes, you'll notice that Kat used to speak in a normal tone and was depicted as just being another regular character in the group but as the show progressed that's when they changed her to be ditzy and in her own world most of the time. I guess they thought it would be funnier and make her character stand out more. I agree though, I hated the voice and it's why I couldn't watch Sam and Kat. Rory Gilmore whiny, narcissistic, cheated on multiple boyfriends. In hindsight, it's not a surprise she turned out how she did with everyone powdering her ass from day one of the show. The way she collapsed because one whole person told her she wasn't cut out for the career she wanted was proof of that. In any other show, that would be the point where the protagonist digs deeps to remember why they wanted that dream or realize their talents were better suited for something else. Instead, Rory trashes a boat, quits Yale for half the year, moves in with her grandparents because Lorelai put a foit up her ass for once, and then spun her wheels for the next decade after graduation doing nothing of note while thinking her fart smelled of roses. Mitchum did absolutely nothing wrong and boy was he ever vindicated in the sequel. I watched it when I was a teenager and the revival came out when I was 22-ish. The moment it really clicked for me is when she botched that interview with that website blog place. She didn't do any prep for a damn interview? Even if you gave her the credit that she thought it wasn't an interview, how do you not prepare for your first day on the job? And then she had a whole tantrum. I was 22 and losing my mind with all the internship application rejections hurling my way. Completely broke the last threads of relatability nostalgic connection I had with her character lol. I think people miss the real point of the show, at least to me. You can have all the intelligence, money and opportunity to succeed in life but your choices are what dictates outcomes. Rory and Lorelai are both victims of their own choices. I feel like the revival completed that circle.